feel ancient? My Twitter account is about to become a teenager. I joined Twitter 13 years ago in March of 2011, and I can't think of a wilder 13 years to look back on. Oh, Twitter was once a place for goofy comics to make jokes and friendships and argue about what color a dress was. For a lot of that time, Twitter trolls lived mostly hidden under Twitter bridges where they belong, but now they have emerged from their bridges, and they don't just live out in the open. They run the entire goddamn place. It is somehow safe for no one except for meme kings. I have some serious choice words for Twitter, and okay, okay, some even choicier words for the fact that I should correct myself and call it X. I loathe that a common good has been destroyed. I miss old Twitter. I miss scrolling every morning at 5 a.m. while I try not to spill coffee on my duvet. The only thing dumber than it being rebranded as X will be when Elon Musk buys the sky and makes us call it land. We'll go and say, that's dumb. And then we'll do it anyway. And I hate that for us. You break it, you buy it. No, you bought it. You broke it. It fills me with rage to think about all the power that is wielded by a few tech bros. They have the money to solve all our problems, and instead they just make new ones. They hide behind faux naivete, oblivious to how their products harm or inspire harm, but the ripple effects are monumental. They're larger than life. And they still treat it like a game. They're just like, whoops, like an extracurricular activity as they race to space rather than regulating the problems they have wrought on us here. It is childish and it is reckless and people die because of it. This is Choice Words. I'm Samantha B. I might have some choice words for tech bros, but my guest today has way more than just words, and it works because they are scared of her. <laughs> I'm, of course, talking about Kara Swisher, and I loved every minute of our conversation. Kara is the host of multiple podcasts, including On with Kara Swisher and Pivot, and her new book, Burn Book, A Tech Love Story, is out now, and it is hot. It is a serious page turner. So take a listen and make good choices. I'm so happy to see, I'm so happy to see your damn face. Yeah. Good to see you. How are you doing? Really? I'm good. Thank you. How good. are you? Really good, actually. Super good. Good. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay. So we are going to talk all about your book. Okay. We want to talk all about our tech leaders in mm -hmm. the industry, mm -hmm. the ways in which they have, as you say in the book, turbocharged the mm -hmm. discord. Mm -hmm. um, but the book is also deeply personal. Mm -hmm. And actually, it's um, it's frankly very moving. Thank you. Thank you. Thank so you. I want to also talk about personal stuff. So I think I'm going to, I do like to start the podcast by talking about the theme of choice. Mm -hmm. I don't want to assume anything about you. But I would say that based on your outward personality, I want to assume that you're very decisive. Yes, I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, well, I don't, I don't, I don't have a lot of time to waste. I think that's the one no. of the themes of the book is I, I, my dad died at a young age, and I, I think it gave me a really big sense at a very young age that nobody has that kind of time. It's an old trope, the idea that you don't have that kind of time, and it was, it was stressed in me at a very young age, you know, because yes. my dad was 34, he was just starting his life, he had just gotten out of the Navy, and then it was done, and that was it. That's all he had, a cool car, he had a Volkswagen, a red Volkswagen convertible, and I just always have been like that. I'm like, mm, no, I don't want to talk to you because I don't have time, or I want to do that because I want to have time, and so right. the times I've wasted have been the most irritating to me, like being closeted, for example. Right, right. Life's too short is um it is a good it is a good guiding principle in a lot of ways. And you had your own health scare too. I did. Which I'm sure had the same effect it of did. just goosing more yes. decisions. Yeah, it did. I had a stroke um when I was uh in China actually doing some work and 
again, it was sort of unexpected. Um, I didn't believe it was happening. I told my brother he was a bad doctor when he suggested it. <laughs> you know, like, what is wrong with you? How ridiculous. Young people don't have strokes. That's for, like, aged, the aged, as they're wheeling their way, you know, to the cafeteria at the senior home. Um, but I, I, it was another stop. I think... One of my favorite books is um, The Trial by Franz Kafka. And the, at the beginning of the trial, um, uh, it, it's I think it's without ever having anything done anything wrong, Joseph K. was stopped one fine morning. And everyone thinks it's about like a Russia or authoritarian state. But it, I, I'm not a religious person, but it's about God. It's about God stopped him and made him start mm. to think about his life. And he doesn't. And that's the whole point um, of the whole thing. And so uh, these things stopped me in order to let me move forward, if that makes sense. And I'm right, not religious right. by any means. I feel like I would very happily defer a lot of my big life decisions to you, probably. You, you should. You should. I have some thoughts. I should. I have some yeah, I, I'm sure you do. But Okay, who do you who do you go to? Is there someone you go to for advice other than you know like a magic eight ball? Uh, I like magic eight ball, and I have several. Uh, so um, sometimes I do use those. I'm like, okay, um, I don't actually. Um, so every now and then, I'll check in with my kids, you know, about things that affect them. Um, right. Uh, but not really. I don't. My wife a little bit. She's such good sensibility. Um, I'll bounce things off of her, and I, you know roll a couple of things over. Um, but in mm -hmm. general, I, I think it drives her crazy. I'm like, we were, we're just renovating our house a little bit. Um, and I'm like that one, that one, like tiles. I'm like <laughs> that one. And she's like, well, let's look at them. I'm like, no, that one. Um, <laughs> and so I think it irritates her in a lot of ways, but it also, you know, I can, I cut through a lot of shit and I, and mm -hmm. I think that's very comforting to my family in that regard on certain things, other things, they're hugely irritated by me by that. So. Do you, do you second guess yourself? Do you wake up in the night? No. Do you have like dark night of the soul? No. Where you're like, no, no. the no. wrong tiles. No, no, never. I'm like pretty happy with the, the decisions I make. And you know, there's a, there's a whole study, you know, about choice. People don't, it makes them unhappy. Choice makes people unhappy. If you go into a store right. and you have two choices, you're happier versus seven because you think you're missing out. And now with the internet, there's hundreds and you're like, did I get the right cot for my kids? Did I get like that kind right. of stuff can happen. And it's really psychically fucked up, right? The amount of choice and information we're provided now. Um, so no, I don't. I, I, you know, I was doing that this night. Last night, I I just recommended an article, which I did not agree with, by Jack Schaefer uh, about mm -hmm. Biden's age. And I have recently been speaking out saying Trump is more incompetent and it doesn't really matter. But by and two things I said is you should read this because and I didn't say it's a different point of view. I said, just read this. People went nuts because I suggested reading it to them. Right. It drove me nuts. And I was right. like, I, I, how dare you? you? All hands on deck. You can't recommend things that are wrong. And I was like, no, I can and I shall. <laughs> like, And so I got into this whole, like, I got into this rabbit hole with people. And I was like, I'm simply asking you to read it. And that's a problem, progressives. Are you fucking kidding me? And then right. someone was like, he's not older than Trump. And I said, you know, technically he is. He, he is actually. But I don't know if it makes a difference, but he actually is. That was met with like, don't say that. It doesn't matter because Trump, I was like, I never suggested it, but factually. So it was interesting. So I got into this thing. Long story short is I got into it. I was just checking facts. And then at one point I said several years and everyone's like, it's three. That's not several. Then I put the definition of several over, which is two and above. Right. And I was oh. like, it is indeed the definition of three. And I, I and I, when I woke up this morning. I thought, oh, did I just waste my time doing that? Like I was just trying to tweak people and treat them right. the way I do tech bros. Like, if you're going to be stupid, I'm going to call you stupid. And and I was talking to my wife about it and I felt bad initially. And then I'm like, no, I feel good about that, that waste of time. You know what I mean? Right. So no, I, I sh that was one moment I possibly could have felt regretful on a stupid thing, but no. Right. Right. Yes. No. Well, people can't, I mean, we can talk about, <laughs> I'm actually curious for your take on the whole debate about yeah. the age of the presidential candidates. And They're old. Oh, they're all, yeah, they're old. they're old. But I mean, this was another, this was a conversation we were having as I was yelling at the radio this morning. And I was like, are we forgetting that it's really, you know, president aside, mm -hmm. the presidency is really 
the company you keep. That's correct. It's the company. It's yes. your staff. It's yes. the people around you. Yes. Yes. Yes, I agree. We actually made that point on Pivot this week, which was he's got the youngest administration. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, all of them are young and vibrant and whatever. So it's not, yeah. you know, and Trump's got a lot of crazy. He's going to have a lot of crazy people around him. My yeah. whole point was what I was arguing with people was to if you want to persuade the unpersuadables or people who are, are persuaded, you mm-hmm. can't tell them they're stupid. Like for being concerned about age, you just can't. You're uh, that's a no. normal concern, and if you do it by saying, "Oh, it's a choice between an old man and a fascist," it's like that's not what I'm saying. It's that I'm concerned. You know what I mean? Like it's a really interesting thing. I do. So yeah, it's um, it's gonna be a wild, it's gonna be a wild ride. Oh, it's gonna be. People are just inflamed on you know, it's either the end of the world or mm-hmm. it's the end of the world, and you're uh, on their side. Yeah. If you actually go and listen to them, and I spent a lot of time online. They do think mm-hmm. it's a holy war. They honestly do. It's really... 100%. We started re-watching The Leftovers, which is one of my favorite oh, yeah. all-time shows. I love it. It's I watch the it rapture. with tears streaming down my face about the rapture. Mm-hmm. And it is so resonant for right now. If you, mm-hmm. I'm watching it through a different set of eyes. Mm-hmm. And the anger, the anger, anger in the world yes three years post rapture is really reminding me of our it's true. post-covid anger it is and it's bad because of that it's because of tech and by the way tech has yeah. been the secret sauce to make it all come together right in some way and yes i don't mean that people were ignorant before but there was a lack of everything if you have everything coming at you and much of mm-hmm. it is false and mm-hmm. it plays into normal american things which are our history is full of ignorance, right? And yeah, I think that I think what tech has done, and getting back to the book, is that um, it, it is it is it, it's a point I make in the book is Hitler didn't need Instagram, right, to do his evil doings. Yeah, but boy, with that, what do you imagine? People, there'd be more followers. He'd have more followers. He'd have more a- a- adherence to his thing because he could get it out there. They do these things in plain sight. Right. And Mm -hmm. and 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 there are uh, foreign entities that are trying to manipulate it. That's not a surprise. That should be not a surprise to anybody. But what it is, is that it's taken it and taken it to a steroid level. So we all are left feeling terrible and angry and reductive. Right. And I think that's an addicted. It's also addictive, which is and it's also necessary. So you have all these things that you can't not use technology, yeah. but it, it it has by its nature. Um, uh, you know, I think I say something in the book like enragement equals en- engagement. That is how you engage people yes. in many ways. And the, the adding of addiction, necessity and a lack of accountability of the people running these companies as the yes. richest and most powerful people on the planet really is, has done a mind fuck on the globe in that re- regard. Yes. It definitely feels like something has been unleashed mm-hmm. and we are not prepared to, nobody seems able to handle it. Mm-hmm. No, they don't. And it's only getting faster. Yes. The singularity is near. <laughs> the singularity. Oh, do you believe in that? No. Uh, speaking of the rapture, <laughs> well, the best thing I ever did is my aunt believed in the rapture, one of my aunts. And uh, and so she talked about it a lot. I was like, all right, fine. I'm obviously not going to be taken up, uh, you sure. know, if, if there's something like that happening. <laughs> I'll be here. I'll be here. And uh, so my brother and I made her a bumper sticker that said, you can buy a, online, speaking of how good things about online, uh, that said, when the rapture comes, can I have your stuff? Uh <laughs> Oh, you're yeah. making it sound. I know, good. right? Like some of these people, it's like, would you miss them? Maybe, this maybe. house is, well, this house has a sauna. Right? Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Yes, exactly. You can move into other people's homes. And stuff. <laughs> I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a rapture entrepreneur. That's what <laughs> you are. Want to listen to the rest of this episode? Head over to your favorite podcast player to hear the entire show. I highly recommend it. 